Pierso86 here. Welcome back for another episode of Final Fantasy XI. We are just in southern Sandoria here, and as you can see, I'm not in my usual duds. I'm actually on Black Mage right now, which is level 15. Subbed with White Mage at level 7. Figured we'd change it up a little bit. So we're just going to talk to the NPC that will give us the first part of the quest that you have to do to unlock the advanced job known as Paladin. So this is a three-parter quest. And let's get the first part right now. Well, that's some epic camera work. Friend, listen to me. It is not cogs nor levers, not even the mightiest of magics that protect this kingdom of Sandoria. No, we elven live by the power of the sword alone. Our blades defend our borders. If you would strengthen your sword arm and learn something of the art, then accept my challenge. What say you? I accept. I too fight with a sword. I see, you have a stout heart. Now listen well. Go to King Ranpier's tomb and bring back a revival tree root. How, you ask? Use your head. Now be gone. Well, we normally fight with a sword or an axe, but now we are fighting with a staff and spells so before we go to king ranpier's tomb which is in east ron four we haven't been there yet we are going to talk to another npc quick who has a quest related to that area i figure we can uh get both of those done in one go okay we're over on the east side of southern sandoria and we're looking for i believe her name is an andesia or something no nope, not that person well, no one gives a shit that I'm just strolling into their house like I own the place. Andesia, that's the one. You're an adventurer, are you not? Surely you've heard of King Ranpier's tomb. Yes, we're going there. Indeed. Well then. I am entrusted with the tomb's care. Not long ago, I used to wash its stones and change the offering every day. But now that fiends have overrun the place... My work would require risking my life. No job is worth that. I decided not to return, but the Dragon King himself came to me in my dreams and spoke, I am thirsty, bring me water. I would like to help him, at least by bringing him fresh water. Okay, so do you want us to do it? I have a request. Would you go to the tomb and replace the offering there with fresh water? Yes. Please take the skin of well water to the tomb and exchange it with a tomb guard's water skin you'll find there. All right, there we go. So we've got the first part of the Paladin's quest is called a Squire's Test and then Grave Concerns. We're heading southbound into East Ron 4. So normally up until now, we've been in West Ron 4. So here's a map going down south towards the tomb, which is another dungeonish area that's not really marked on the map. I'm pretty excited to try Black Mage out. I love playing the melee class, but taking a break and jumping onto something different is fun too. And it's great with FF11 because you can play every job on the same character. And I've got some macros made up for some spells. There are a couple of spells that I'm missing. There's a couple that you have to quest for. You can always look into getting those a little later. Okay, we're just coming up on King Ranpier's tomb right now. I just need to remember where the entrance is. That's not it. We'll find it. This is one, there are a lot of places in this game where I find that I know the map like the back of my hand. This is not one of those areas. I do remember it and I remember what we have to do for this quest, but the actual knowing the layout, I, I never came here enough. Okay, here we go. Dungeon time. I don't think we're going to run into anything too bad here. This is a pretty low level quest. It's meant to be done at like level 10. So, alright. So I'm the Black Mage. So I do like the nuking and spells and stuff. I can kind of sort of help with healing a bit. But we'll leave that up to Kapipi for the most part. We'll get the Laneral as our tank. 
uh, who else do we want? Let's get non amigo for treasure hunter boost. And let's get. I don't think we've tried Ayami yet. Let's get Ayami out here. Get some samurai skills in here. There we go. And they've got a couple of books here as well, too. Oh, they got a survival guide. So now we can teleport here. We're going to look at field support. And I'm going to get a refresh effect so that my magic points will replenish as we go through. If you look down at my magic point bar right now, it's not even full. And I don't know how well we're going to do for experience here. Oh. Oh, yikes. Level 80 range? Uh, goblin muggers. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going that deep in. Uh, three plague bats, three rock eaters. I don't know if we're going to go that deep into the tomb, but we'll flag a page in case we do. I did uh, activate the Empress Band as well, too, for bonus experience, just in case we do any leveling up while we're here. And unfortunately, I, in typical Pierso 86 fashion, I do not have a map for this place. And I think I also forgot to buy a scroll of warp, so this could be fun. It's like Goblin Thug showing up as too weak to be worthwhile. All right, let's head down underground. This mouse bat here is showing up as easy prey. Three plague bats, three rock eaters. Well, I guess we'll just pick a direction and go. That's all we can do. So basically for this quest, um, both quests that we have with the exchanging the water and getting the, re the revival tree root, both of those are done at King Ranpir's grave site. So the well water or the water skin exchange is easy enough to do. Just trade one for the other. The revival tree root, you actually have to wait for a notorious monster to spawn. And he is called Spook. He's a ghost notorious monster. And yes, the name is Spook. As silly as that sounds. And he... He usually spawns at set times at night. I'm, I've seen him spawn as many, I think usually he spawns once or twice. I swear I saw him spawn three times one time back when I was, when I was playing in the old days. So yeah, we'll see if we can get him, get a revival tree root from him. We can buy revival tree roots. Like I could easily just go buy one from the auction house, but as I've said in earlier episodes, this is the fun way to do it. Go do some dungeon crawling. Take the harder path, because we like the abuse. Okay, this looks familiar. So I think we're going the right way. Spook also has a chance to drop an item called a Traveler's Mantle, which is a cape piece. And that one gives, if I remember correctly, I think it gives bonuses to evasion and some other stats. Speaking of capes too, I also camped Spinny Speepy again. I managed to bag a Miss Silk Cape, so we've got that for our for our Black Mage. The mine bonuses help because we are subbing White Mage, but we definitely want to be having intelligence bonuses. Some of the stuff I did get from my other character when I was cleaning out his inventory, so... Thanks, other character. Your sacrifice is appreciated. Oh, these goblins are starting to show up as easy prey. I like to think that's a sign that we're going the right way if the enemies are starting to beef up a little bit. Oh, look at that. We found the gravesite. So, it's 7.30 in the morning Vanadiel time, so we're definitely not going to be seeing Spook anytime soon. But we can swap out this water. 
He changed the water and got the tomb guard's water skin. So since we have to play the waiting game right now, and we did flag that page, my thoughts are we have a party with our, our buddies here. We should go see if we can get a little bit of EXP while we're waiting. Beef up Black Mage a little bit. I do have a couple of spells in my inventory for if we do gain any levels. We've got Blizzard, Waterga, and Shock Spikes, which I bought from a vendor in Windurst. Didn't know you could buy that from a vendor, but I guess you can. All right, let's see if we can find... Oh, that tunnel up there looks promising. You can go a lot deeper into the tomb here and find really strong enemies. I guess, yeah, looking at the book back there, there's even some that are up in the level 80 range. Well, let's hope we're just going up the levels a bit and not dealing with anything too outside of our league. Wind bats, easy prey. Goblin Butcher, also easy prey. I have a feeling he would aggro us. Let's see if we can just sneak by him. And we need to kill Plague Bats and Rock Eaters. Pretty sure was our objective. Oh, there's a Goblin Ambusher. We'll just have to remember our way back when night falls. All right. I'm ready for a fight. Evidently this guy is too. I'm uh, trying to use my magics. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Just had to do a double check on my macros there. For some reason my... Uh, Feeble macros weren't working there. Might have just been... I did just get a new keyboard, so I might have been just hitting some of the wrong buttons or something. It's always the perk of having to learn something new and get comfortable with it. Alright. Black Mage pull for the win. This guy has a ranged attack, so he's not going to come very close to us. And I can just sit here and screw him up with all kinds of spells. Paralyze is best used early on in the fight, but at this point I'm just trying to get some skill ups while we're out here. In fact, I... Oh, yikes, did we just get aggroed by something? Oh. Well, I'm glad you're not level 80 or whatever, because that would have absolutely killed me. Bats are always hit or miss. I mean, you get, you get so used to bats just leaving you alone if you leave them alone, and then you get the odd ones that absolutely want to wreck your face. Got access to some white mage spells as well, too. Excellent. Got pretty decent EXP from those guys. This will be a good time killer until we wait for Spook to pop. Hopefully we get that revival tree root. I mean, I can always camp them again if need be. It'd be really neat if we got that Traveler's Mantle. That would be a really nice drop to get. Probably going to get some linkage here, but... Who cares? Oh, you know what it is? I have blind set to alt one. And I think what I was doing was hitting the uh, key beside one when I was trying to use my spell. That's why it wasn't working. Here I thought I'd forgotten how to do spell macros. Glad that's not the case. There's also some hot keys on my new keyboard too that are screwing me up. Like, it's a really nice keyboard, but I have uh, these, like, G, like, gamer hotkeys on the left side of my keyboard, and I keep wanting to hit, because, you know, on a keyboard, left control, you're used to that being, like, the last key on the keyboard. Well, now there's these extra hotkeys, and I keep hitting them, thinking they're either the control key or the escape key. It's, uh, 
proving to be a bit of a challenge to get used to that. Let's blind you and paralyze you. And I better hit you so my tank actually takes you off me. Let's actually hit you with some spells. Arrow. And we're cutting through these guys quick. Now we got another bat over here that's probably gonna, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the wind bats are aggroing us too. Yay. Well, at least we're running into some conflict. Would have sucked if we came in here and didn't fight anything. All right, one down. These guys are weak to light, so let's hit them with a banish spell. Love support job. So many possibilities. Oh yeah, we're gonna get you all kinds of screwed up. Oh jeez, this is awkward. I'm trying to get over that little hump. If I recall correctly, I think goblins are pretty resistant to fire, so I'm trying to avoid using the fire spell. It would still do damage, but might as well try to get the best damage output possible. I could be wrong about that, though. Now, normally, if I was in a party, I wouldn't be throwing out spells like crazy until the mob was half health or less, but we're cutting through these guys pretty easily, so I'm really not too concerned. Oh, wow, level 17 already. I didn't even realize we were level 16. So let's go ahead and learn Blizzard. And I am going to create a quick little macro for Blizzard. Man, this, this is fun. Oh, Kapipi, I'm glad you're keeping me alive. Let's try this Blizzard spell. Very nice. Oh! And I wasn't facing the second enemy, so it made me resheath my weapon. That's always a little frustrating in the combat in this game. I like the combat system. It's not perfect, but I do enjoy it. Even with its clunky little quirks. And another blizzard spell. It's fun blowing up shit with your mind. Well, I don't know if we're going to find the enemies that we got in that page, but I'd say we're doing quite well where we're at. I'm actually going to try something super quick. I have a macro for this, but we'll just try this. Stone gun, area of effect. Haha, <laughs> nice. Oh, it hit all three of them. Oh, shit. I uh, underestimated how big that area of effect was going to be. <laughs> well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Another stone gun spell for good measure. Oh, no, I got interrupted time it. Sometimes with spells, you really gotta time it with their attacks. Like, when they swing at you, and you know they, they need that time before they can do another swing. Try to time it. It's best to try and time your spell in that period where they're getting ready to swing again. Just to try and avoid being interrupted. Huh. Well, that was a fun little bit of, uh, little bit of aggro. Okay, I think we found the way we have to go, I think. Hopefully this isn't the wrong set of stairs. No, oh, there's a grounds tome. No, I think we're good. We're good. Well, the sun is going down and it's starting to get darker out. You can see the moon in the distance. So, hopefully... 
hopefully we'll spe spook here pretty quick. Oh, it's 20 hundred. We got skeletons up and it looks like spook is up and he could potentially pop more than once. So let's go ahead and grab him. So I double checked online. He's got about a 29.9% chance of dropping the root and about a 16.6% chance of dropping the Traveler's Mantle. So we'll, we do have Nanamigo with us, so hopefully that'll help our odds. Nice! Got the root. Mission accomplished. Yeah, he doesn't even come up as impossible to gauge, because notorious monsters, when you check them, that's what they come up as. He's coming up as easy prey. Revival tree root, ice crystal, and a square of cotton cloth. Alrighty. Well, now we just gotta make our way back to Sandori and hand both of these quests in. And then we'll be one step closer to unlocking Paladin. Thanks to the wonderful gift of modern teleporting, we are back in Sandoria. So we've succeeded in both quests, now we just have to go hand them in. So we'll start with the lady that asked us to swap out the water. And then we'll move on to the Squire's Test guy. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, Elven names are really hard for me. Some of them I have a hard time even pronouncing. Have you brought the Tomb Guard's water skin? If you have, please give it to me. Yes. Uh, I just gotta find it here. Ooh, there it is. About to say, I hope we didn't drop it. I thank you, kind adventurer. His Majesty the Late King thanks you too. I'm really excited to play Paladin again once we get these next couple of quests done. Job is like my soulmate. So my question for this episode what was the first advanced job that you went and unlocked? Which one could you not wait to play? That was just the one that you knew you had to try, whether you stuck with it or not. Let me know in the comments below. I actually originally was a huge Dark Knight player, and then I eventually moved over to Paladin. I didn't like not being able to tank. That's kind of my first love there. Probably will play Dark Knight at some point, but uh, Paladin's definitely going to be my first one here. Go to King Ramper's tomb and bring back a revival tree root. Use your head. We did use our heads. Actually, no, we didn't. We could have just bought one off the auction house, but we did it the hard way just for you, Balaziel. Ah, I see I was right about you. You've proved your mettle today. Further tempering may forge you into a hero among adventurers. In recognition of your success, I offer this sword. Train diligently and grow strong. You're a little too new at this to undertake my challenge. Train further and return here once you feel ready. Yeah, so that's a sword that I'm pretty sure we used at some point from Sparks. Now, I believe you have to be level 20 to flag the next quest. And I actually did off-camera just before we came back here. Killed a few more mobs. Got us up from level 18 to level 20.